Yeah, I'm an audience participation kind of guy, so I'm going to keep asking you to do things like that, raising your hands up. How many people out here are not criminals? All right, a lot more hands going up now. You're not criminals. Okay, prove it. That's up to you. Wow, people are not rushing the stage. Okay, why don't you want to prove it? We're out here today exercising our First Amendment right to speak freely, right? Why shouldn't we have to prove that? It's our constitutional right, right? Our constitutional right to speak freely, to freely associate. Why should we have to prove that? Well, there's a guy out there named Mike Bloomberg. And he's got 40 billion dollars. And he thinks that if we want to exercise our Second Amendment right to bear arms, we should have to prove that we're not criminals. Now, I don't know about you, but I see a disconnect there. It's still a constitutional right. And people say, well, guns are dangerous. Well, yeah, they're supposed to be dangerous. What the heck good is a gun and isn't dangerous? I mean, seriously, why do you want a gun that isn't dangerous? But it's still your right to bear arms. It is still your right to defend yourself. It is still your right to defend your family. It is still your right to defend your property. And there's absolutely no reason whatsoever that you should have to go and prove that you're not a criminal before you do that. Now, let me take a little second here and, and just drive this home, how much $40 billion actually is. A lot of us play the lottery, crazy as it is, a lot of us do. You take a dollar, you go buy a scratcher's ticket, so maybe you got a chance at winning a million. $40,000. Buy a pretty nice car, right? $40,000 million is $40 billion. So for every scratcher's ticket you buy, Mike Bloomberg could take a million dollars and buy a pretty nice car. Think about that. That's the relationship we're talking about. For every dollar we've got, he's got $40,000 million. Now this is a guy who went up in Washington State, got a ballot initiative on the ballot, told everybody it was just about background checks. But it was 18 pages long. And hidden in those 18 pages was a whole lot of stuff that really had nothing to do with background checks. Now think again, background checks, hey, we shouldn't have to prove we're not criminals to exercise our rights in the first place. Amen. So even aside from background checks, now we got 18 pages of legalese saying what exactly? Well, basically, they're saying, well, if you want to transfer a gun, then you have to go through a federally licensed dealer to do it. Oh, shit! Right there, sir, with the NRA hat, you're holding the gun. If you hand it to anybody else in this audience, you're transferring it. You're not, you don't have to sell it. You don't have to, to, to you know, gift it to somebody. None of that. You just have to hand it to anybody. Somebody earlier mentioned shooting out in the desert, which I think most of us probably like to do. I know I do. So if you're out shooting in the desert, just plinking at tin cans, and you hand a friend of yours a gun, you just transferred it. And if you didn't go to a federally licensed dealer under Mr. Bloomberg's scheme and get a background check first, you'd be a felon. And if you're a felon, you lose your gun rights. So this is what his 18 pages was about. All transfers, anytime you hand somebody a gun, would have to go through a federally licensed dealer. And when they go through a federally licensed dealer, all the information on the gun, all the information on you, all the information on the guy or the girl that you're transferring it to gets recorded in his books. And all that information winds up with the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosives. The federal government. Anybody here heard the term registration? That's what we're talking about. 
This is registration, pure and simple. Transfer. Transfer. There you go. Mr. Bloomberg gets his way with his $40 billion. We're all going to be felons or we're all going to be registered. This is serious, folks. Now, if you go over there to the ACCDL booth, whether you sign up or not, and, and we sure hope you do, but whether you do or not, we've got information on exactly what we're talking about here. And I know a lot of people, because we hear it all the time, a lot of people say, this is Arizona, it'll never happen here. Forty billion dollars. Just the Bloomberg organization alone, not taking into account any of the other folks who spent money up there. They spent four million dollars, they hired six full-time employees, they had a ground game up there that was just second to none, and they got that registration initiative passed because they dedicated nothing else but time, money, and people to doing it. And they got it done. They saturated the airwaves. And let me tell you something about initiatives, folks. You know where they went? In the big cities. Because that's where the votes are. That's where the left wins. And they win every time when they flood the airwaves with these TV commercials saying, but it's just about the bad guys. You don't need 18 pages to get the bad guys. They just want to get us. So when they come here, and they are coming here, they've said it, they've been press releases out, and we've got the links for you. They've been all over the media saying, Arizona's coming. When they come here, they will win unless we stop them. We've got bills here in the legislature. House Bill 2431 is the one that's going to stop them, but we need your support. Got a couple other good bills here. We've got legislators here to talk about them, so I'll let them do that. But please, help us out. Before I wrap it up, I asked these folks if I could do this. Constitutional Sheriffs and Peace Officers Association is here. As you know, that uh, part of the uh, founding of that organization was due to Sheriff Richard Mack who also is a, a big supporter of Amen. our Second Amendment and was a big reason why we still have one. Um, I would, I don't know how many of you know this, but uh, uh, Sheriff Mack had a heart attack recently and is feeling poorly, has spent a small fortune on medical expenses and does not have insurance. So if, if you'll give me one second. I'd like to pass the bucket around, okay? Um, if you'd be so kind, stick a little money in there. Whatever gets into this bucket will go to Sheriff Matt. I'm going to stick 20 bucks in there myself. Please pass this around and help out Sheriff Matt because he's helped us out in so many ways. And with that, I'll give it up to the next speaker. If you have any questions on this, please come and see us. Thank you so much and God bless. Woo!